What were the Wars of the Roses? The Wars of the Roses were a series of civil wars for the throne of England between two competing royal families, the House of York and the House of Lancaster, both members of the age-old royal Plantagenet family. Waged between 1455 and 1485, the Wars of the Roses earned its flowery name because the White Rose was the badge of the Yorks and the Red Rose was the badge of the Lancastrians. After 30 years of horrific carnage, the wars ended and a new royal dynasty emerged, the Tudors. In 1422, Henry VI succeeded his father, Henry V, and became King of England at just nine months old. Thanks to his father's military conquests, Henry VI also became the disputed King of France. In 1445, Henry VI married Margaret of Anjou, a noble and strong-willed Frenchwoman whose ambition and political savvy overshadowed her husband's. However, all was not well in King Henry's court. He had very little interest in politics and was a weak ruler. This incited rampant lawlessness throughout the realm and opened the door for power-hungry nobles and kingmakers to plot behind his back. Henry's lack of leadership led him to lose almost all of his holdings in France. This and the corruption and mismanagement of power in England not to mention heavy taxation caused frustrated property owners and peasants from Kent to revolt in 1450. Led by Jack Cade, they marched on London and presented Henry with a list of demands known as the Complaint of the Poor Commons of Kent. Henry never officially agreed to Cade's demands, one of which was to record Richard, Duke of York. Richard of York, as great-grandson of King Edward III, had a strong competing claim to the English throne. In 1452, Richard of York had returned to England and decided his mission in life was to rid Henry of his corrupt advisers, particularly Edmund Beaufort, Duke of Somerset. He raised an army and marched on London, declaring fealty to Henry but also compelling him to remove Somerset from his post. But Somerset held on until Henry succumbed to his first bout of madness in 1454, leaving him virtually catatonic and unable to reign. During Henry's illness, Richard became Lord Protector of England and imprisoned Somerset in the Tower of London. It was a bitter victory, however, Queen Margaret had given birth to Henry's only son, Edward of Lancaster, in 1453, which weakened Richard's claim to the throne. In February 1455, Henry recovered from his spell of insanity, and almost as suddenly as he yielded to it. Richard and his ministers were sent away, and Somerset reinstated. On May the 22nd, 1455, Richard of York, aligned with Richard Neville, Earl of Warwick, marched against Henry at St Albans. After failed negotiations, the brief yet victorious battle raged through the town streets and left Somerset dead and Henry wounded. The Yorks took Henry prisoner and Richard became Lord Protector again. Queen Margaret and her young son, fearful for their lives, went into exile. As Richard maintained a shaky hold on England, Margaret worked behind the scenes to restore Henry to the throne and uphold her son's place as his rightful heir. Fearing his days were numbered, Richard formed an army, commanded by Lord Salisbury. Salisbury's army met Margaret's large and well-equipped army, commanded by Lord Audley at Blore Heath on September 23rd, 1459 in Staffordshire. Though outnumbered two to one, the Yorks soundly defeated the Lancastrians. 
Richard of York, Salisbury, Warwick and their forces withdrew to Ludlow Bridge near Ludford, Shropshire to stand against Henry and his men. On the night of October 12th, many Yorks defected and their leaders fled. Richard himself fled back to Ireland. But Richard and his supporters weren't finished harassing Henry and Margaret. In June of 1460, Richard's ally, Warwick, entered London with thousands of men. As they advanced on Henry's army in Northampton, victory seemed unlikely. But unbeknownst to Henry, one of his Lancastrian commanders was a turncoat and allowed Warwick's men access to Henry's camp. The Yorks easily won the battle and captured King Henry as Margaret fled once again. With Henry under his control, Richard again proclaimed himself and his heirs Henry's successors. Henry agreed so long as he'd retained the crown until his death. Their agreement was passed to the English Parliament and called the Act of Accord. The ambitious Queen Margaret, however, would have none of this compromised and raised another army to rise against the Yorks. Richard set out with his forces to defeat Margaret's army and settled the matter of succession once and for all. The armies clashed at Wakefield Green near Sandal Castle. But things didn't work out as Richard had planned. He was killed and his severed head was put on display wearing a paper crown. Richard's son, Edward, Earl of March, succeeded his father. He also took over where Richard left off against the Lancastrians. In the middle of winter 1461, his York forces defeated the Lancastrians at the Battle of Mortimer's Cross. Weeks later, they were crushed by the Lancastrians at the Second Battle of St Albans. It was here King Henry was rescued and reunited with his queen, but Edward wouldn't give up. In March 1461, Edward confronted the Lancastrian army in a snowstorm in the middle of a field near Toton, North Yorkshire. It's believed over 50,000 men engaged in brutal fighting and around 28,000 died. The Battle of Toton was the bloodiest one-day battle in English history. The Yorks emerged victorious and Henry, Margaret and their son fled to Scotland, leaving Edward King of England. Edward IV may have gained the throne, but he'd underestimated the deposed Queen, Margaret's. With the help of her compatriots in France, she ousted Edward and restored her husband to the throne in October 1470. Edward went into hiding, but wasn't idle. He mustered an army and won York victories at the Battle of Barnet and the Battle of Tewkesbury. At Tewkesbury, Henry and Margaret's only son was killed, and the royal couple were captured and held in the Tower of London. The throne of England reverted back to Edward. On May 21st, 1471, deposed King Henry VI died. Some believe him murdered by Edward. Queen Margaret was eventually released and made her way back to Anjou in France, where she died in 1482. King Edward IV died in 1483 and was succeeded by his young son, Edward V. Richard III, the ambitious brother of Edward IV, became his nephew, Edward's Lord Protector but he plotted to have Edward V and his younger brother declared illegitimate. The power-hungry Richard succeeded in his plot and was crowned in July 1483. To eliminate any threats to his throne, Richard III has young nephews held in the Tower of London, supposedly for their protection. When both boys, now famous as the princes in the Tower, vanished, and Richard was accused of ordering them murdered, the king quickly lost favour with his people. 
As Richard's right to the throne became tenuous, the Lancastrian Henry Tudor, with the help of France and many nobles, staked his claim to the throne. He met Richard on the Battle of Bodsworth on August 22nd, 1485. After fighting valiantly, Richard III was killed. Legend has it his crown was placed on Henry's head at the very spot where Richard fell. Henry was declared King Henry VII. After his official coronation, Henry married Elizabeth of York to reconcile the long feud in Lancaster and York houses. The union ended the Wars of the Roses and gave rise to the Tudor dynasty. Please subscribe, like or click on the bell to be notified of other upcoming videos. Thank you for watching. See you soon.